Good morning, fans, privateer, FX. It's a Wednesday. Uh, it's a Wednesday after the Tuesday where we saw Trump walking into a cornfield shovel, shovel on his shoulder. Uh, no idea what he was thinking when he pulled this uh, strategic move with sort of postponing any stimulus. Um, stocks got slammed, <clears throat> as we all know. Interesting high up there, 3420. Triple top now. Um, the panic amongst my uh, devoutly Republican friends is is um, is kind of amusing. Just because it's, you know, they've been so smug um, for the last sort of couple of years. There's real out and out panic, uh, calling for the end of America. Blah blah blah. Tell you what, America will be just fine, um, even if if either of these dopes become president. People forget who runs America and how what makes America what it is it's business it's hard work it's work basically you know America people in America work harder than anyone else in the world um, this is their God work and money and that's never that's not going to change no matter who the president is and if everyone has to move to Florida because the taxes in California are too high fine then you'll see lots of great businesses come out of Florida. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at the markets, see what we're going to do today. A uh, lot of big calls at the end of the day yesterday. We're not quite there yet ourselves. We need price to confirm before we start diving into this big change in trend. Um, Euro, 116.84. We know the drill. We've talked about the level. Uh cable not really too psyched about touching downside cable I really feel like um, the pain is topside in cable so we're not we're gonna leave this one alone if we end up putting on the long dollar trade we're gonna leave this alone dollar Swiss uh, again like I don't know if you're on acid and you're a shepherd with a flock of sheep over 10,000, you, sh you should probably be trading dollar Swiss. Everyone else should probably just avoid it. Um, so, so are we. This is a conundrum here, um, but not really. We've learned from our own shorts that this shit is not going down well at all. You had horribly bearish news on Friday morning. President of the United States gets COVID. You get mildly bearish news, risk off news. Um, yesterday, dollar yen went down 13 pips. Dollar yen is not is not bearish. It's not going down well at all. It's not going up well at all either. But the sneaky trade here is to buy through 80, just on a technical trade. It's a pivot, it's a triple top, and if the dollar in general just starts screwing higher, I mean, is dollar yen going to resist? It certainly is not reacting to risk at all. So a lot of people have been asking me about dollar yen, uh, whether they should be short dollar yen. Uh, no is the answer. There's no, there's actually no reason, there's no evidence that short dollar yen is the is the trade uh, certainly euro dollar cad Aussie um, these are probably the three three horses here three musketeers if you want to buy dollars and do the change in trend trade euro yen no one cares sterling yen pretty bearish day there Ooh man but uh, you're heading into this murky mid-range shit and it's sterling yen 
Dollar czar is not going up very well. Let's face it, right? It closed up at 73. Now we're at 63. It, it seems to move 10 big figures in Asia a lot, which usually just means they're stops. So that means the New Yorkers are long. Um, Short-term punters leave stops. These stops get done. There's no reason for dollar czar to be moving in Asia. No one even knows where uh, South Africa is. Uh, amongst the Asian dealers so that's a weird one but you could similarly to dollar yen dollar yen is not going down too well dollar czar is not going up too well at the moment so we're just watching uh, biding our time we have in our book 1680 we wrote that last week so we'll keep an eye on that level but we're a bit cautious with dollar czar it's kind of annoying we of course like to be short are. Um, but whether you like it or not doesn't mean anything. This is a pretty bullish bar in MEX, bullish engulfing from the lows. Um, the conservative uh, method here is to wait for confirmation. So you want to make a new high after a bullish engulfing like this. So 76.31. Keep an eye on crude. Crude also dropped a couple of percent last night pretty quick. What else? You can imagine Aussie Yen took a bit of a digger, bearish engulfed. Oh yeah, where's Aussie? Aussie, same chart as Aussie Yen because Dollar Yen's not moving. Uh, we like Aussie lower. Um, this is one of our this is one of our favorites. We'll be selling Aussie today. We're going to be sort of feathering into Aussie shorts today. Uh, because this this ticks a couple of boxes this is risk off a little stronger risk off than euro dollar and um, this is also possible change in trend in the dollar plus a super strong um, technical bar see the the euro bar is not as strong Aussie bar bang bang which leads us to euro Aussie for those of you who are Sherlock Holmes out there um, if the euro bar is not as strong, the Aussie bar is stronger. Euro Aussie was higher. Got up to 165.35. This point we also have been talking about now for a week. It's important. 166, the figure. Uh, root 66, triple six, whatever you want to call it. 66 saloon. Keep it in mind. If we go massively risk off, there'll be some money to be made um, at that level. You can imagine CAD Yen took it in the teeth. As we mentioned on Twitter late last night, we're like elephants, right? This is what we do in this business. We remember levels. We remember levels. Oh, look at this. Went through already, that little slut bagger. We were expecting some risk up through 30. I guess there was a little bit of risk, but when it goes in Asia, you don't you don't trade dollar cad in Asia, so it just stops. These are guys who couldn't keep it in their pants and uh, were trying to trade dollar cad in Asia. Not a huge fan of that. So, never mind. We thought 30 might be a jump off point. It obviously was not. Um, now the chart's pretty ruined. You got this trap break bullshit going on here. So 50 is going to be resistance. Huh. Moving on. We thought that was going to be a, a bang up level, but you know, it had, you had to wait. And you really honestly wanted the uh, you know the guys from Toronto at the desk to really help that through. So we'll see. But Dollar Cat in general um, is one of your horses. If you're going to choose this change in trend trade, which everyone's screaming about um, the last 14 hours, Dollar Cat, Aussie, and Euro are your horses. Dollar Turkey had a funny bearish day yesterday. I wasn't watching the news, but that was a weird one. A lot of tops up here at 780. 
Not sure. It's got to be the government. Won't last. But that was a. Actually, what am I doing? Those. That's on the hourly chart, so it's not as useful. A bit sleepy this morning, I guess. What am I talking about? The hourly chart in Dollar Turkey. That's an hourly chart in Asia. Totally ignore that. All right, Dollar Turkey's fucked as always. Going to ten, Dollar Turkey. We talked last week about support at 79. We got to 77 overnight. Now we've bounced. Careful on this gold now. Bearish engulfed. Back down through 79 again. This will go lower. Lot, a lot of longs out there in gold. This is your Sodom and Gomorrah trade. If equities really get smashed and it's throw the babies out with the bathwater, gold will get so fucking hosed um, he'll get hosed anyway ZB same shit just sell the shit you know sell it buy a bunch of it back uh, get yourself a good average or be square for the open and then sell it again so today you want to sell this between sort of 28 and 08 um we don't think there's any way possible ZB can go up, which is a terrible thing to say in trading. I'll take that back. We're bearish ZB. We're selling high ones. Um, same strategy. And finally, crude. Crude was a bit of a dick fuck um, for us yesterday. We we kind of sold 4020s and then we sold 4080s. Was 89 the high? I thought it was 81. 86. Flopped up to 86 when when um, ES was at 34.20 probably. I was at the gym. And then when the news came out and things started popping lower, uh, finally fell. So it wasn't a painful P&L uh, deal in crude. It was just annoying, a bit of a scratch. Um, you know, we were short ES, so we kind of cut our crude position. It was kind of the same VAR. Um, anyway, crude's turned with risk. Now we have a triple top up there at 4080. I am a very bearish crude, uh, but I'm also very bad historically at trading crude. P&L never lies. Um, so... Whether I'm bearish or not, maybe that means you should buy. I don't know. Anyway, crude came off. Now it's in the middle of nowhere, so why are we even talking about it? Anyway, Lagarde is speaking today. Again, I don't know what she could possibly say. F1 minutes tonight, obviously. It's a long ways away. We don't really have much going on in, in Europe. Industrial production in Germany, if you care about that. Um, we had some bond auctions, 10 years in the U.S., which would be kind of interesting for, for me. Also, some European bond auctions, Italian retail sales, if you have the BTPs on. Um, we're focused on Euro, Aussie, and Dollar CAD today. The levels aren't close. We're watching. We're watching for evidence to see if this is going to be a change in trend, if this move in ES is going to turn the currency world in another direction. No evidence of that yet. We're patiently waiting. Ciao.